<laughs> I'm wearing my party shirt. Do you know why? Because I think I just had the best deadline day of my life. Roll a freaking intro! Now it's not often that I've done something on Football Manager that I've never done before. Now that sounded weird. It's not often that I touch grass. It's not often that I accomplish something on a video game that I haven't before. A particular video game with spreadsheets. It's not often that I talk to women. Where'd that come from? It's not often that I make eye contact with somebody while walking by them on the side. Why, why is this on the, who wrote this? No, let me. It's not often that something like this happens while I'm playing Football Manager on stream. If you want to see that sort of stuff, link to the stream and the live channels all down in the description. Dang it, I forgot. I was filming the other video and I totally forgot to mention that you should subscribe. And Reese has really been getting on me about that. Here, hold on, I'll do something fun. It's Zealand in a fun shirt. Hit the subscribe button so we can buy another fun shirt. I feel like that'll get the people going, right? Anyways, subscribe down there live stuff down there if you want to watch this save and see cool things like the deadline day that we just had earlier today that made me put on my party shirt because we made an insane number of signings on that deadline day now let's let's take a look at how it ended yes oh. So what do we do to get to this point? And how did I make three team defining signings on deadline day with no money? Well, geez, yeah, I think that's what you're here to tell us. Fair enough. The first important thing that you need to understand is that these guys were on trial for a long time. Not all of them, but the one that we signed to kick off this four signing bonanza in the last three days, even though I cannot stress enough, we have no money. This save starts with a zero transfer budget and an exactly even payroll and expected payroll to the dollar, to the pound sterling, to the kroner, to the Kazakhstani tinga, to the Indian rupee, to the hon- my initial way to get around that is to vent a new way to trial farm. And that's what we did leading up to these decisive few days at the end of the deadline day that I think could make the difference between us getting promoted or not. We started a trial farm. Now, there are a lot of things to know about running your very own trial farm, and I plan on making a full video about it. But what you do need to know is that when somebody comes through as a free agent, you should probably offer them a trial. And before they expire, the day before, you can come into your contracts and sort by contract expiry. So on February 3rd, I'll come in and look at Davide Brivio and assess how good he is. Do I want to give him another four week trial to stick around for the next transfer window or not? Because this player would contribute to my team if I sign them. And this is August augmented by the fact that you now have the ability to approach to sign a player, agree to all this nonsense, come in here and see what they have to uh, offer you financially, and then leave. And they won't force you to continue the negotiation. It's a very useful way to see exactly how much you would need to pay for a player while also not actually needing to pay it. This is not something you used to be able to do before. So you're able to keep track of a collection of players that are training with your team while also knowing exactly how much they're going to cost now it does change anytime you come up with an offer other interests from other clubs can adjust this this isn't a frozen in time process but you start with a working farm of players that you know you might want to sign if money comes available we want this guy then this guy then this guy if this guy gets hurt we want this guy you get the idea they come in through your scouting center a little drop down and you offer the trial but what if in this case three of the four guys we end up wanting to sign become available for trial in the last week of the transfer window because their agents are realizing that they're a little more desperate than they thought and the second division of Austria isn't as bad as it used to sound. Well, then you want to wait to the last possible moment, which we did. So we signed Oleksandr Miganov. He's been on trial for months. We knew that he's a very he's a perfect type of wingback player to fit my five at the back system. So the moment that we decide that we have enough money or that we decide that we're close enough to promotion, as you see, we're just one point out of the top spot. It's the only freaking spot that gets promoted. Only one. Don't know why that we can push through our club vision of work within the payroll budget and just blast forward on the payroll itself. Then we went out and signed Miganov. He's a fairly reasonable individual, only wants $43,000 a year, which is less than a thousand bucks a week, which I'm aware most of you are using. But it's at this point that my experience 
messing with football manager budgets at lower levels comes into play. It's something everybody that plays football manager should know. When you end up at this level, there is a point even past your actual payroll budget where you can offer legit hardy contracts past even your highest earner two players but once you cross a line all of a sudden you can only offer say twenty three thousand dollars a year when obviously we normally can pay a lot more than that because we're so far over our payroll budget the board is actually stopping you from being able to spend that money so i actually i I'd thought of this i offered Miganov that small salary and agreed to that deal because this didn't push me over that threshold which i would ballpark as being about five to ten percent over your payroll budget so take 10 percent of your payroll budget and then are you that far over it okay then you're probably going to be able to offer a significant contract to somebody else it's an inexact science but it's a feel and when you hit it you will see it in your contract offers you're only able to offer that ridiculously low amount. We offered Megan off 43,000 because we had a feeling we'd still be able to offer full contracts to other people, and we were. You can actually figure out if this is the case even before the player you've offered signs. So if you have the offer out to Miganov and then you go to a different player and offer them a contract, you can go through the negotiation as if that money that you've offered to the other player has already occurred. And if you realize that you can't negotiate a contract with this player because of that, you can back out and cancel your contract offer to the other player. It's very finagly, but it does create the real feel of a deadline day to me. There's a lot of stress and a lot of tension around being able to balance all of this out when you're in a tight budget and we did find enough room so that when alan cruz came in a week later we were able to make the deal alan cruz for the easy price of selling my soul get in here big alan get in great player we got to wait a week to make sure that he had good ability and then we threw down a big 135,000 a year contract his way but it was at that point that we could barely offer people any money i'd have to try and pull this off without a signing fee i might be able to do that i'm not going to be able to do that with the offer out to end so we're like over the threshold where we can offer any significant money but there are some more players out there that I feel like can improve the team. So how am I going to make this work? Well, I've got a solution for you. It's going to involve you watching Pirates of the Caribbean, not the last two, they're apparently terrible, but like the first one, or being familiar with naval combat in some way because I'm a history major and let's just saddle up this nerd horse for a second. If you are in a ship that is being chased by another ship and you are losing water, you're being caught. There is something you can do in order to escape anyways. You have to get rid of the non-essentials. This would be tea. Well, not for some of you, but for me. Boxes of gunpowder, those sorts of things. You take those and you throw them over the side. You get rid of the non-essentials. If you deem assigning essential to accomplish your goal, it is always still possible because it's likely that signing is replacing somebody on your team. So you're ready to gamble because what you can do before you make one of these signings is look to sell. And sell we did. You guys are you guys are thirsty. Honestly, this guy's bad. I hope you play him. Hey, there he goes. And then we sell those now. Flavio's on his way out. Yes, we've moved Ilya Petkovic. I uh, Shamek is gone. Beautiful. Wonderful news. Get out. We pillaged our youth teams for anybody that had any legitimate contract. You go up to your youth team and go down to squad. You can sort by the contracts and see anybody that you would want to get rid of. You can do that same thing for your U18 team. And you can, of course, sort your senior team and get rid of dead weight, which ideally you would have already done. You can also find the player that is designated to be replaced. Or, often the case, and what I did with one of our most painful sales, a player that played a decent role in our first half of the season, Marco Kleins is sell the worst player at that position to bring in a better new one. We wanted to bring in a new midfielder in Cruz. We already had. We could sell Marco Kreins to free up money to go after a center back, which we desperately needed because we didn't have a lot of depth there. This is such a roll of the dice, but Kleins is on the move. And those fire sales that we pulled off allowed us to throw offers in on two more players, Andres D'Alessandro, the 40-year-old, and Ganch, who just offers a sort of quality we don't have at this level as a late-game sub that can open the game up. And we'd freed up so much wage budget, we knew we could make the offer to Andres D'Alessandro because he's 40 years old. He only wants 35 and a half thousand a year to keep playing. We knew we could make that offer while also still staying under that 5 to 10% threshold to make a legit 
full contract offer for Bruno Piri. But this is where my big brain plays went from like eight to 11 because we had two hours left. And in Football Manager, there is always another thing to consider. And I have to give you guys credit chat for helping me work my way through this. We had an offer accepted for Bruno Piri with about two to three hours left in the deadline day. Cause you wanna wait until the absolute end so you know that you have it scouted. Uh, you know you have all of your moves made. That offer involved a signing on fee, and thus we were rejected because we couldn't cover the signing on fee with our transfer budget. Obviously, I'd already asked for more and been denied. So what did we do? But if we cancel the deal for Hassan and Dom and we work on Bruno Piri, I mean, we have to get it right. There is no option. We have to get it right. We'd have to somehow negotiate a signing to the level that we did before. That's, I can do it. Come on, I can do this. I can freaking do this. I'm gonna grab the dice and I'm gonna throw them and I'm gonna get Bruno Piri signed with an hour to go. Sorry, dude. We realized we might be able to get the deal done without a signing on fee. We identified the issue. We realized the other guy probably wouldn't have his work permit improved in time anyways. And we freaking went for it. Hold on. So there is a glitch where the transfer deadline day stuff doesn't actually pop up for you. I've heard of some other people having it. And that actually means that when you hit continue, larger amounts of time jump through. This is a great reason to have auto save on every 15 or 30 minutes. Saving doesn't take long in FM22. Because if you aren't in the deadline, day screen like i have a glitch where it just doesn't come up for me then you can't actually skip important events and this almost cost me a signing because as you see piri accepts the deal with 20 minutes remaining after that remarkable negotiation but we were not able to come back from the continue despite our best efforts three two browse browse i'm browsing stop halt immediately Stop! Stop moving! Until it hit midnight when it brought us out of the continuum, we had to instantly register our team or else we were screwed. And I couldn't accept the Peary deal and get him to the club in time because that takes five minutes to process. The way I got around this is on deadline day, I have one more recommendation for you. Set your general manager to finalize transfers. This means that if a transfer deal does get done under the wire, your director, football, or general manager, or whoever else is gonna make that decision. And that decision's basically always gonna be yes. So it can save you getting screwed by the bell. It's right here, finalizes player signings. You can delegate it to anybody. They'll just go ahead and accept it instantly. So you don't have to worry about that player actually being on your team. And that is how we pulled off the biggest five head play, maybe in the history of my football manager career. Cue the party. Give me everything you got for this cat jam. This is resetting your chakras for the week that we just pulled this off. Resetting your chakras for the week that we pulled all this off. Not just Bruno Piri, four deadline day signings, three deadline day signings, and one other signing a day before deadline day. Yes, three days before deadline day. You get the idea. We managed to finagle four signings with no budget.